Hi, and welcome to the Inquendo Guitars Workshop and another part in the video series where I'm building my brand new single cut guitar model. Today I'm going to install the frets into this neck. So yeah, let's get started. So before I start working on the neck, I have a few announcements and updates I wanted to share with you guys. Uh, first of all, I want to welcome all the new subscribers. The amount of new subscribers over the past weeks has been amazing and I really appreciate your support. And also the amount of nice comments you guys give me in the comment section down below. I really appreciate it a lot. So thank you very much for subscribing and for commenting on my videos. It's really helps me a lot and it really motivates me to keep on doing this YouTube videos. Talking about YouTube, uh, at the end of this video I will make an announcement for a video I'm doing in two weeks time on the 16th of November. Uh, that will be a one year anniversary here for me here on YouTube, probably a Q&A. So be sure to check out the announcement at the end of this video. Um, yeah. So for those who are new to my channel and perhaps are not aware, uh, a kind of guitar for me is a hobby or a side business I do next to a full-time day job. Uh, and that meant for this week I couldn't spend as much time in the workshop as I would have liked. And I didn't make as much progress this week as I would have liked and I would have uh, liked to show you in this video. Um, for example, I had to make a trip to my wonderful wood supplier to get a lot of new black limba, body blanks and neck blanks uh, to be used on this guitar and on next episodes. That's one day uh, gone that I couldn't spend here in the workshop. But I've got enough supplies now to make at least uh, four more guitars. So <laughs> plenty of content coming your way in the, uh, yeah, in the coming months even. So after a day spent visiting my wood supplier last Saturday, uh, I got myself an Arbor Press. Uh, I had ordered one online, but I have been waiting and waiting for it for weeks. And apparently it got lost in shipping. And, but I managed to track one down. I went there myself, picked it up, and then I had to do some modifications to it. For example, there wasn't a hole in the plunger. Uh, for the fret pressing attachment and of course I had to make uh, support for the neck and I did shoot some footage of me uh, unboxing the other press doing the modifications but unfortunately I made a rookie mistake uh, by deleting the footage from my camera uh, before I had imported it and saved it onto the, my computer I thought I did import it into the editing program into, into a, a separate hard drive but apparently I lost all the footage of at least two evenings this week so but I have my other press and I'm going to use it in a moment uh, to try and press in the frets uh, it's time now to prepare the fret wire and I've got a brand new coil of fret wire that has of course to be radius to the correct radius of the fretboard uh, 12 inches in my case so I'm going to cut three half a meter uh, pieces of fret wire. My guitar next take around about one and a half meter of fret wire. And I think it's uh, easier to work with three separate pieces of half a meter. Uh, set them to the correct radius using my radius jig. And then start pressing in the frets with my brand new other press. And I never used a fret press before. So I'm, yeah, I don't know how this is going to turn out, but I have high expectations, it will all be fine. So let's start by cutting three pieces of fret wire to length. The first one will be a bit difficult. For example. Fret wires cut. Check the radius with one of these radius measuring tools and I think it's nearly there coming from the coil. Not quite, so I'm using my simple radius jig to set the fret wire to the correct radius. Yeah, 
over here. Let's do the other ones. So with the thread wire prepared, it's time to get the fretboard ready to take the frets. And I'm going to recut the slots where the inlay is and where my uh, guide pins are when uh, from installing the fretboard. I'm going to check the depth of all the fret slots and uh, deepen them a bit if necessary. And I'm going to measure the tang for the frets and I make sure my fret slots are all deep enough to take the frets. And of course, I'm going to make a little groove, a little V groove using a triangular file in every fret slot. And this helps you insert the frets and also when the guitar needs a refret uh, one day, it's easier for the guy working on that guitar at that moment uh, to pull out the frets without having any tear outs of the fretboard. So just use a little triangular file, a very fine file, and just run it across the fret slots once or twice. Uh, be careful not to dig into the corner of the fretboard uh, too much. Uh, that will cause your fret to rise. Um, so yeah, just very carefully run a file along the fret slot and create a nice little V groove. It, it just helps. It's a small effort, but it really helps. So, so yeah, I'm going to prepare this fretboard uh, in a time lapse, and I'll see you in a moment. So the fretboard is ready, time to press in the frets uh, yeah, and use this fret press for the first time. So that's going to be very interesting. Uh, I'm used to doing uh, one fret at a time, so cut it to length, put it in, cut the second one to length, uh, etc. Uh, you could also uh, cut all 24, 21, 24 frets to length, have them laid out in front of you. Uh, and doing it like that. Uh, I'm going to try it the way I'm used to. So by cutting one, pressing it in, cutting the second, pressing it in. Uh, but yeah, maybe that has to change with this new technique. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Let's try the first fret. Piece of fret wire, fret cutters. Cut it to length. And fingers crossed, like I said, never done this before. It takes a lot more force than I expected, to be honest. I'm glad I chose the uh, one metric ton version instead of the 500 kilogram one, because it's, it really takes an unexpected amount of force to press in the fret. Oh, wow, it's seated perfectly. So yeah, I can really see why this is the preferred method instead of hammering them in with a hammer. Yeah, it's seated perfectly. So yeah, let's do more. And I always like to cut off the ends straight away so they're not poking me or I can hurt myself. And it's way easier, uh, especially with the higher frets, uh, to cut off the ends. One at a time. This is awesome. I really have to clamp down the press though. So 
I'm really taking my time and, uh, to get to know this tool and I'm really, really careful. It requires a bit or a lot more finesse than I expected. I expected to just press in the fret by hand into the fret slot and then use the press to, uh, to press it in. Uh, but it requires a bit more finesse and a bit more getting used to. Uh, for instance, sometimes the fret seems to want to go in at an angle and i rather take it out and be very careful and, and maybe even use my fretting hammer at some points to gently tap it in first before using the press. Um, the press can uh, create an, a tremendous amount of force. This is a one ton, one metric ton, so a thousand kilogram um, force press. And it does it on a very, very tiny surface. There's tremendous amount of force and you can easily yeah, press in the fret at an angle, at an incorrect angle, bend the frets or maybe even destroy the neck if you're not careful. Um, I believe, I think, when using this presser, I'm being very, very careful. And like with all new tools and techniques, it just takes a lot of time, or at least some time, to get used to. So let me finish up the rest of the frets. And the last one is in. So all the frets are in and I'm pretty pleased with how it went, but I really have to get used to using my fret press and I need to make some changes to the neck support and maybe make a little fence or a jig on the base of the fret press so that the neck is always perfectly aligned with the press, but all in all, yeah, very pleased with how that went. Uh, yeah, I just have to do it a couple of more times before I'm really proficient at it. Next up is to sand down and file down the edges of the frets and make a little bevel, and put in the side dots and fill the little gaps underneath the frets with a bit of super glue and some ebony dust. Uh, so yeah, that's what I'm going to do next. So my side dots are in and the gaps underneath the frets are filled. Uh, yeah, the reason why I don't use glue while setting the frets but fill them from the sides like you, show me, uh, like you saw me do in the clip just now is 
that I don't like to fiddle around with glue while setting the threads. You always have some squeeze out and you end up with a terrible mess, uh, if you're unlucky, on your fretboard. And with the way I do it, I still have a nice and clean and polished fretboard and no glue residue I have to remove using uh, razor blades or scalpels. Uh, still nice and clean, but also the gaps underneath the frets are fully filled with super glue and dust. Uh, yeah, nice work. Now the next job is to check if my uh, neck is still nice and straight and then I can start leveling, uh, fret and dressing and regrounding the frets and of course polish them. Uh, yeah, and I'll be back to you when that's done and then I should have a nicely fretted guitar neck. If you're interested in a more elaborate, more tutorial-like video, I did one a while back and here's a link and I will post it in the end screen of this video. So if you're interested in a more elaborate tutorial-like video on how I do my fretwork, please check that one out and I'll be right back. So the fretwork is done, nice shiny polished frets and I'm absolutely thrilled with how they turned out and yeah it took quite a while to be honest between doing the actual fretwork itself and of course for me setting up the camera and such uh, but yeah this is one of the jobs I never rush, I always take my time and make sure my frets are absolutely as perfect as I can get them and I must say I'm real in real close to absolute perfect on this neck. Yeah, this is one of the most essential jobs on any guitar, making sure the fretwork is correct. And this is what makes 
uh, a guitar play good, play excellent, uh, lets you set the correct action when the guitar is done. So yeah, take your time and don't rush your fret job. It's so, uh, so important. Uh, yeah, so it's getting pretty late today. I don't know if I have time in this episode uh, to do the headstock uh, uh, inlay, but right now I'm going to glue on the veneer, let it dry overnight. Uh, yeah, tomorrow is a Sunday. I usually edit my videos on a Sunday, but maybe I can sneak in a couple of hours uh, and include the headstock logo as well. It's the next day, it's a Sunday, and I just finished editing the majority of this video. And unfortunately, I have to leave it here. Um, yeah, there's not enough time um, to also finish the headstock. So that will be in the next episode. Uh, I will drill, of course, the tuner holes, uh, do the thrust rod access cover, and I'll do the Unquendo Guitars logo inlay. Uh, so yeah, keep an eye out for that one. Um, yeah, about the announcement I did at the beginning of this video. Uh, upcoming 16th of November, so two weeks from now, uh, I have my one year anniversary here on YouTube and I wanted to do something special for you guys. Um, so I'm going to do a Q&A video. I wanted to do a live stream, but unfortunately I can't get a live stream to work here in the shed and I don't have the time to set it all up. So it will be a video in which you can ask me any question you'd like. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions, guitar building related, tool related, personal questions, whatever, leave them in the comment section down below. And please start your questions for the Q&A video with Q&A so I can sort them out and I can try my best to answer them all in that video. Uh, yeah, that's it for this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed it and if you did, please leave a like, it really helps. And if you're new to my channel, uh, welcome. Uh, and please uh, yeah, consider subscribing and be a part of the ever-growing Unquendo Guitars community. I would really appreciate it if you did. Uh, yeah, that's it. I hope you liked it. Like I said, next week I'll be finishing the neck by completing the headstock. And I hope to see you in that video. But until then, have a nice week.